Hey everyone, welcome back to Simming History for a very special spooky episode. It's October, that means it's Halloween, and so today we're building a pop culture house from my favorite mystery movie, Clue. So in case you haven't seen this movie, spoiler alert for what may lie ahead, but seriously, go see this movie. Because Clue, the movie, is based off of Clue, or Cluedo, the board game, the set is incredibly important to the story. It's a murder mystery. You're trying to f- figure out who killed Mr. Body, with, wh- with what, and in what room. So the board itself is really its own character, and the mansion is a physical manifestation of that board. And what's more, it's a highly detailed one. When they design the set, they actually put the rooms in the correct order. Starting with the hall in the center, and going counterclockwise, it goes to the hall, study, library, billiard room, conservatory, ballroom, kitchen, dining, and lounge. And each area really has its own kind of character. The front door, for example, is a running gag of ringing doorbells and then people coming in and then getting killed to an extent that eventually, when the doorbell rings, Mrs. Peacock shouts, they have to go away or they'll be killed. The study is probably the room that most of the drama takes place in. It's the room where, after dinner, The blackmail is revealed, Mr. Body is confronted, the weapons are opened, and the first apparent death takes place, which of course isn't actually the first murder. And later, it's the room where they store the bodies, both Mr. Body and the cook, although eventually they give up on that. After a certain number of deaths, they just start leaving those people where they died. Now, study was a bit of a challenge. The exterior of the set doesn't really match the interior, and that's because the exterior was a real-life house in Pasadena, California, whereas the interior was a movie set. So you just sort of have to make things work, and fitting in the bay window in the study was really the biggest challenge for this room. The rest of it really wasn't that bad. It fit fairly easily in the outline of the exterior of the house. And, but the bay, well, you'll see how I get it to fit in later. So let's move on to the library. The library I think really quite lives up to the gothic mansion of this set. It has this wonderful wood fireplace, it has this inscription in it that's a a play on words and phrases in French that basically means new money has an obligation. The walls in the library are lined with bookshelves that go from floor to ceiling. For the most part, the room appears to be either wallpapered or painted, but the wall of the fireplace does seem to have wood paneling. The furniture in the library is all tufted leather. It pretty much screams stereotypical library. I love it. It's got such incredible detail. There's a book stand in one corner. Behind the couch, there's a table with drinks. Under the window, there's a table with some statues. There's reading lamps, a radio. There's such incredible detail in this room and with every other room. The links that they went to to make this set look full like a mansion is just phenomenal. And of course, we can't forget the doors to the library, which from the inside of the library looks like a bookcase. Hinting, of course, to the secret passages in the Clue Mansion. Now, 
the billiards room. The room which, apparently according to movies like Downton Abbey, is where the men go after dinner. Well, unfortunately in The Sims, there are no billiards tables. So for this build, I had to make do with a ping pong table. But it's basically the rough size and it's got the right kind of idea when it comes to an indoor sport. I gotta have something. I mean, after all, this is the room where Yvette sits, sits and listens to the tape recording of confronting Mr. Body with his crimes. And then later, it's the room where Yvette meets her end at the end of a rope. Otherwise, the billiards room is really just filled with a bar, red walls with wood paneling, and a bunch of artwork relating to hunting and games. So a pretty classic gaming room for the gothic mansion. So once upon a time, in these big old mansions, they had something called a conservatory. It was basically something like what we would know today as a sunroom or four season room. They were where the family went to enjoy basically being outside without being outside in the winter. This really isn't where a ton of gardening took place in these large wealthy mansions. They wouldn't have been the ones gardening. That would have been the staff maintaining the landscaping. But this may have been where they gone to take tea. Eventually the use of the conservatory filtered down into the middle classes and you could see it in movies such as Harry Potter, the third one where Aunt Marge blows up like a balloon and then floats out the back door. Well, that's a conservatory. That little glass addition on the back of the house. So eventually they did become quite common for everyone, but not really to this sort of scale. We really don't see the lounge that much in the movie. It's just sort of in brief glimpses when the motorist goes into the lounge while he's making his phone call, while the secret door is opening. And then when Colonel Mustard and Miss Scarlet wander their way in and are begging at the door to be let out while everyone else in the hallway is asking them to let them in. So to lay out this room and really to lay out the entire house, I had to watch Clue several times, in slow motion, hitting the pause button frequently to write down what pieces of furniture were where, where were the fireplaces, where were the light fixtures, the artwork, the knickknacks, because my goodness, this house is so full of artwork and knickknacks and furniture. The set dressers really did a magnificent part, a magnificent job. And everything is basically what I would expect to be in a gothic mansion. It's a lot of gothic and Victorian furniture and artwork. This is particularly noticeable in the hall. There's a spot next to the kitchen door where there's a cabinet. In the cabinet is a display of dried flowers and taxidermy birds. And it was this sort of naturalistic display that was all the rage in the Victorian era but it's almost unheard of today. And they put one in. It's, it's little tiny details. It's on screen, like most of the set, it's on screen for just the most briefest of seconds. But they paid attention to those little tiny details in a way that is truly impressive. So even though we only see this room for a few seconds on screen, I really wanted to make sure to get it right, which, with how briefly it was on screen, was not easy. Next to the study, the dining room was probably the easiest to build just because of the amount of filming that took place in it and the variety of angles that were shot, um, which is interesting because really all they do is eat in the dining room. There really isn't many much discussion. No murders take place there. It's just them slurping soup. And they really made a point of making it clear that everyone was slurping their soup, didn't they? 
It's one of those weird little gags I think they tried to put in the movie that didn't quite land when this was released to theaters. But the room itself is basically what you'd expect for a gothic mansion. It's got a gothic stone fireplace and these arched windows on either side of it. Heavy wood furniture along the walls for flowers and serving dishes. Massive wood table in the center with these wood upholstered chairs. And it's got this great delivery window in the wall between the dining room and the kitchen, which took me some time to find a good match for. So you're not seeing it in this clip. You will see it later on. Sims doesn't really quite have like a buffet window like that. But all in all, it's a it's an interest it's an interesting room. It's very green. Everything is green. The walls are green, the carpet's green, the upholstered chairs are green, everything is green. It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> the kitchen was also pretty easy to build. We only really see two camera angles in the kitchen, but it's enough. You can clearly see what's where, where all the nooks and crannies are, where all the hutches for storage are, um, that there's exposed pipes on one wall, and that the cabinets are pretty much all white with what looks like a kind of gray-brown hardstone countertop. Couldn't quite match that in The Sims. Got as close as I could. You can see where the stove goes, where the sink is in relation to the windows. Um, you can see that there's pot racks hanging in the ceiling. And of course we know where the fridge is, right? It, everyone knows where the fridge is in the, in the kitchen. And Clue. Fridge plays a big role in the movie. But we'll get to that role just a little bit later. Now for the uniquest room on the entire set, because it actually wasn't on the set. The ballroom was a real ballroom and it was in the mansion that served as the exterior set for the movie. I assume they didn't build a ballroom set because they spend so very little time in it. Only Miss Scarlet and Colonel Mustard go into the ballroom and for only a couple of seconds. So why build a set for it, right? May as well just use one that exists already, huh? Now with all the other rooms done, we can finally finish out the hall. Had to get all the other rooms done first so we knew what size the hall needed to be. And most importantly, where the stairs could go. Now, the hall is really an important character. And I do kind of mean character. I mean, I think everyone's favorite part of the movie is the end, right? Where Wadsworth is describing the three possible scenarios and everyone's running back and forth and back and forth. You really couldn't have done that without the hall. And even though its purpose is really just as a giant hallway, the set designers didn't ignore details here either. The wood parquet floor is meant to resemble the grid on the board game. And the furniture up against the walls has sticks with the Victorian and Gothic we see everywhere else. It's pretty much exactly what you would expect. It's also where Mr. Body actually dies, by the candlestick, Mr. Wadsworth by the revolver in the final scenario, and of course, the singing telegram girl, also by the revolver. With the first floor rooms in the hall all complete, 
I mean, that's it, right? No, of course not. I mean, we're missing the most important thing, right? Gotta have the secret passages. And luckily, Sims has a way to do that. Unfortunately, it can't be the fireplaces or the fridge. Sims secret doors are bookcases. So we're just gonna have to find a way to make bookcases work. More, imp more importantly at the moment, we have to find a way to fit the secret passages in. So we're gonna work on the exterior shell, the first floor, and find how we can fit all these secret passages in to get them down to the basement level and then how to connect it all. So I don't think it's realistic for the secret passages to be up on first floor level. All the rooms have windows. There's no place for the secret passageways to go. So they have to go down to the basement, right? Well, it's what I went with anyway. And once down in the basement, it's just a matter of manipulating the passages to connect all the rooms that you need to connect. Because true to the board game, like they have with every other thing on here, they connected each room correctly. The lounge is connected to the conservatory and the kitchen is connected to the study. So obviously I had to find a way to do that. And of course, I had to build the basement. I mean, they do explore the basement. We don't really see a lot of it. It's just a standard basement. It looks like there's some workshop tables down there. And really just kind of a lot of stuff and a lot of cobwebs. So we're just gonna make a basement with a lot of stuff and a lot of cobwebs and a couple cr crisscrossing secret passageways connecting secret bookcases in all the various rooms. And the book secret bookcase may look out of place in the kitchen, but I think right now it's more important that it achieves the secret passage goal. We only really see the hallway of the second floor in the landing, but we can tell from what angles we do see that there are four doors coming off of it and then a separate stair going up to the attic. And from the clips of Wadsworth and Mrs. White exploring the rooms, we know there's at least one master suite and one nursery. So after outfitting the second floor hallway. Off camera, I outfitted four rooms, including a master suite and a nursery. Since those are not really part of the movie and are really only there to benefit anyone who wants to play with this in The Sims, I figured you guys are probably not all that interested in that build. I mean, I said it's not really in the movie. What it does do is it lets me finish the exterior of the building. It lets me build the attic. It lets me build the two towers that we can see in the exterior shots, a square tower in the center of the building and an octagonal tower off to the left-hand side. And it lets me build the roof. And the roof for this house is a roof style called mansard, which basically means there's both a pitched and a flat roof. The pitched roof goes back so far and then there's a flat roof up above it. Um, with usually some sort of wrought iron or stonework detail surrounding it. And that's the, that's the space that would have been created by the attic. 
The flat roof would have been above the attic, and the mansard would have not been a terribly useful space, because the pitch roof would have gotten in the way of storage. But really, all that's left for me to do is to finish up some exterior details on this build. Unfortunately, I couldn't quite make the towers as tall as I would have liked. Sims, unfortunately, has height restrictions. But I was pretty pleased with how the exterior turned out in the end. So I'm just going to let you enjoy the rest of the build in the final images. And I'll talk to you shortly. As you may have noticed, to make the secret passageways work and make the building line up with the exterior shots, I decided that some of those front windows had to have been facing into the secret passageways. We know they weren't facing into the study and lounge. We know what those rooms look like. So they must have just been lighting the secret passageway. Now, of course, in reality, that's not going to be the case. No one's going to have front-facing windows for a secret passageway. But for a movie, sure. And you also may have noticed during the build that there were a couple of things I changed several times, such as the windows, the window surrounds, and even some furniture. And that was really just to get this as close as I could to the movie set. Thanks for joining me today for this very special spooky episode of Simming History. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a very good Halloween. Let me know in the comments section down below how you will be celebrating the holidays and what your favorite spooky movie is. I will see you all in two weeks. Until then, 
Check me out on Instagram where I post teasers for upcoming episodes. And stay spooky, everybody.